Hey, what's up guys? It's Catalyst47 here back with another video. So guys, for today's video, what I want to do is showcase my updated um, Burning Abyss deck profile. I know this is, I mean, normally I would probably start with this one instead of like, I started with the Dragon Link one for this new format. Um, but I just, I just wanted to try out, like I was really more excited about Dragon Link at the moment, but now it's like, of course I was going to make a Burning Abyss. Like, I think Burning Abyss is probably my favorite deck so far that I've played ever since I came back into the game last year. So... I definitely had to make a profile for it. Um, I will go, I mean, I've already made some changes because I took this deck to locals yesterday, but it didn't perform too well, mostly because I feel like in this current format, you, even though this deck is definitely the tra um, more trap reliant, I do feel like, I mean, traps can be good, but there's just some decks right now that make some incredible boards and just I feel like hand traps are very necessary now. So I did make a few changes and I'll go over those changes that I made when I'm doing the profile. Um, just, uh, but yeah, basically I just wanna give you guys my updated Burning Abyss because that is one of my main decks on this channel. And yeah, guys, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so let's get started with the deck profile. Guys, sorry about the angle that my camera's in right now. I don't have my tripod with me here at my parents' house. I forgot it, so I'm for now I'm just gonna, it's, it's not gonna look as clear, but you should still be able to see all the cards well enough to know what they are. So of course, starting with the main deck, we got, of course, Triple Tour Guide, just the very best starter in the deck, honestly, and just an amazing card. It's a one card combo, so definitely a very good card to have. It's very susceptible to hand traps, but uh, you can. there's still ways, of course, to play even uh, around that, stuff like that. Then we got, to Rhino Warrior. I recently, well, I don't remember on my last profile, I don't know if I had one or two, or I know at some point I was playing zero, but I decided to put this card back in just because it's it's literally any BA name, honestly, that you could need. And it's just, in, in some ways it could, it's better than Tool Guide because most, I mean, yeah, Valor is a hand trap that some decks are using right now, but it's not as predominant as like Ash Blossom or, or something like that, so. Ash Blossom doesn't do anything to this card, of course, like, when it's on the field, but Valor, like, yeah, it does hurt if you normal, you special BA, and then they Valor, your Rhino Warrior, then your BA gets destroyed. Kind of sucks, but it doesn't happen too often. Um, at least in the tournament that I was yesterday, it didn't really happen. So I think having two is fine. Uh, Tour Guide is a better normal summon, which is why I put three Tour Guide, but I don't want to run three of this card because I feel like that's a little bit too many normal summons. Um, it, it is a little awkward if you draw, like, both Tour Guide and this card. Unless you have another BA name as well, but yeah, I think two has been working out pretty well. Like you, it, it makes it so that you basically see, maybe see one, you know. And I guess the last other normal summon going into the BAs now, course triple graph. With graph also being a card you want a normal summon, um, that's basically eight normal summons in total. So with the forty card list, that makes it so that you have a, you basically you're not guaranteed, but you. You have a pretty good chance of seeing well, at least one in your opening hand. So, of course, the graph is obviously the best BA, just special summons from deck. So, definitely a three of. Uh, I'm still playing Seer at two. I think I did that on my last list as well. It's just I don't really like to open Seer. Like it's not a very good card to open, but of course you want more than one because you don't want. If they ever banish it, you want to have more than one copy. It's a very good target for banishing by your opponent. So having two, I think, is the ideal number. Just makes it so that you um, you still have more grind game. Like you definitely don't want to play one, but three. Like I said, I just I just don't like opening up Seer. Like it doesn't it doesn't do much for you. Then we got two Farfa. Um, of course, the best um, monster for interruption. Uh, definitely. I feel like you definitely need to play that too because if you open it, then that basically kind of means well, you can't you can't use it off Beatrice no more. But yeah, I think two is fine. Uh, like I said, banishes a card for the turn. Really good interruption. Standard. Um, playing two Scar. Uh, I feel like since we have the I mean, we have three graphs, we have the two Rhino Warriors, we have the two Scar. Like I don't feel like we need a third one since you mostly only search Toria with this. I mean, there's other targets, but. Um, most of the time you're gonna go for tour guide and you basically have like I said with With a uh, rhino warrior with scar and the three tour guides. That's basically one two three four That's seven copies of tour guide basically in the deck 
So it's just, yeah, very, um, a lot of ways to get the tour guide, so I don't really feel like you need the third scarm, honestly. Two has been working out pretty well. And now for the one-ups, we got the one Alec, the one Calcab, the one Barbar, and the one Libic. These are just the the more the more useful BAs, honestly. The Libic gets a lets you sometimes play like extend even further, being able to get one out of your hand if you have. It's just another way to get another body on board. Alec negates monster effect. Barbar, of course, burn for damage and Calcab. Uh, actually, Calcab has been coming up more often now, and I feel like in a couple of my games yesterday he came up. It's just like I think like two or three games. Um, since there's a lot of like control decks right now, you know, you have like decks kind of like I mean, prank is kind of combo, but there is some control in there. So you have some prank kids, you have um, you have invoked Dogmatica at all, like you know, you have Eldritch with back row as well. So there's a lot of decks with back row that I feel like Calcab actually is okay for in the meta right now. So. Yeah, these are just, but these are all just one of you just want different names and that's it for the BAs it's 13 BA names um, which along with Rhino Warrior that kind of makes it with 15 you know I feel like that is plenty you don't really need much more than that um, and yeah and then the one honorary BA of course the absolute king backjack since this is the trap variant I do think that backjack is very viable um, it just kind of sucks the only thing you don't want to do is of course draw this card I think out of the games that I had yesterday, I drew him and it was either my opening hand or my sixth card. I drew him twice and it really, I mean, one of the games wasn't that bad because I had a uh, Dynamiscus set. So I was able to discard it and still get the effect. But the other game, it was just very, very dead. But I mean, that's going to happen every once in a while. But that's why we only run one. So you have a small chance of opening it only. But it's a very good card with the traps. So and then going into the hand traps, we got Triple Ash Blossom. And I guess this is part of our trap lineup as well. Uh, triple Emperor. So I actually was not playing Ash Blossom yet yesterday. I was actually playing um, I was playing a third Fiend Griefing and two Ice Dragons Prisons. Which even though Ice Dragons Prison is a decent, I mean, it's a good card on paper. I just yeah um, I talk with some of my friends and everything, and I guess in the current format, it's just not that great right now. So, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of decks with just a lot of different types. Like, it's a lot of engines. Um, but, I mean, you do have, I guess, it can work against Sky Strike because they're all warriors. It can work against Tribe Brigade as well since there are a lot of them are like Beast or Beast Warrior. Um, so there are some decks that it does work against, but there's just other decks that it just doesn't do that much for. Which I guess is true. And the main out reason I had it before was um, also because of the Dragoon, but... Actually, at my locals, not many people have been playing decks that use Dragoon, so... Uh, and plus, it's just, it kind of sucks that you have to bait the Dragoon, because you can just negate it if you don't bait the negate, so... Yeah, I decided to cut out Ice Dragon's Prison for now. Um, don't get me wrong, I still think Ice Dragon's Prison is a very good card, and it's probably going to go back in eventually, but for now, I decided to... I just feel like you really need hand traps. I was only running the Imperm, and I just feel like that was not... You weren't really seeing... With only three hand traps, you weren't really seeing any... In my open like in my opening hand so it made it made the deck really reliant on going first which the deck is very strong going first but going second it's definitely a lot weaker so this out that's why i decided to put in the ash blossom so i'm probably going to test it out again next week see if that is better but now going into the actual trap cards we got of course triple solemn strike just solemn strike paired with you know torrential or needle ceiling or something like that it's just very very good um your opponent cannot most of the time they won't be able to respond to that since it's a counter trap card um but yeah strike very good card definitely think it's an absolute must in a trap deck like this then we got of course the triple torrential um just very good card of whiteboards of course um and yeah, it's just a very good card overall. Not once per turn, so if you draw multiple, it's not a big deal. Then we got three Dynamiscus. This card actually has a wide variety of uses, which is why I have it in the deck. Um, it banishes to your targets. It doesn't discard for cost, so if it gets negated, you still get to keep like the hand ad advantage, I guess. Uh, and it can also bring itself back and turn itself into another body, so that's pretty good. 
And oh yeah, and then the last thing is that since it vanishes any face up card, this is also your out to certain cards. Like, you know, uh, yesterday I I ended up getting um, I mean it didn't come up yesterday, but um, my opponent did have uh, there can only be one, so it would have been if I had drawn it, I would have used it. It's just uh, I ended up phoenixing it out, but yeah, Dynamics would have been able to out the TC Boo as well, and then you can out Mystic Mind. So it's a it's a pretty good part overall, being able to not just target monsters. And then we got for the two ofs, we got two needle sealing. Just uh, I mean I think torrential is better, but needle sealing is also a good card, and I just don't have the space to run three, so I'm running two right now. You, you just want at least two so you can trap trick it out, at least. That's why basically all these traps are at least a two of. Fiend griefing, two fiend griefing. Um, like I said, I was running three before. Um, and the two ice dragons prison. Uh, in, in place of the ash, but because I feel like you really do need s more hand traps in this format I decided to cut the one finger thing in the and the ice dragon's prison and finger thing it just generates a good amount of advantage being able to put back a monster on your opponent's graveyard back to the deck and being able to send one of your fiends so Definitely good stuff and last but not least The three trap trick uh, I am debating on just cutting this card at 2, just so I can make the deck 40. Right now the deck is 41 cards. Uh, I just feel like Trap Trick is such a good card though, being able to search basically any other trap. The only thing that kind of sucks is um, that you can't activate, you can only activate one more trap after you've activated this card. So, um, so you definitely don't want to see multiple of this card, which is the reason why I'm thinking of cutting it to 2. And also because I want to make the deck 40, so. Uh, but yesterday I, I was playing a 41 card list um, and the deck didn't do that good, but I don't think it was because of the fact of trap trick, I just think it was, um, I needed more hand traps. Um, and I, I mean of course I lost the die rolls, I think I played three rounds before I quit, uh, two rounds before I quit. Um, cause if you lose two rounds you're basically not that at the top. So I was like, and, and I just, I, was, I didn't want to like, I just didn't feel like playing out the whole tournament because it was like six rounds. Um, but yeah, both rounds lost, and then, uh, I mean, honestly, both games were definitely, it was possible to win, like, the first round. I placed in for Noble Knights, but of course, he won the Dyro, and that deck going first is just insane. Um, and because I don't have any hand traps, it's just, I mean, besides Imperm, but I didn't draw it. So it's, there was nothing really I could do. Um, and then games, uh, the game two, of course, I went first, and I, I won pretty it wasn't like that close either. Uh, game three, of course, he went first. Um, and actually, I guess in that game, maybe I might have misplayed myself. I maybe I didn't play it as well because I did for the end. Could have maybe won. Uh, and then round two, I played prank kids, but that round I most I should have won honestly. But just the games were so long that it went into time. And of course, prank kids with their monsters that gain life and burn and all that stuff. I, that's literally why I lost just of life points. So feels bad but I think if we had grinded it out I think I would have won game two uh, and I definitely would have won that I would have been a 2-0 but well nothing could be done there so yeah the trap trick definitely uh, like I said I might cut the card to two just to make it 40 now going into the extra deck we got the one Beatrice of course to be as Beatrice you need it we got triple Dante um, I, I mean, I just love seeing the playset, which is one of the big reasons why I play it, but this deck is a very grindy deck, so you definitely need at least two. Um, I don't think yesterday in the games that I played, I don't think it ever came up where I needed the third one. Um, but I definitely needed two for sure, I've definitely used two almost every game. So if you really want to, you could probably cut one Dante. I just like to have a third, just in case. Then we got the one Fortune Tune. Um, it didn't come up at all, so it's just potentially maybe a card I could cut in the future, but I mean, I could definitely see its uses um, in sticky situations where you can't beat over the monster with Dante, but it just didn't come up, but I, I still think I'm going to keep it because it, it's not like it's never come up. I have had to use it just in yesterday's tournament and never came up. One downward, definitely not cutting this. You definitely need this card, especially when you're if you bring back Dante with Seer and it only has, it's only Dante, no materials, you definitely need the, the downer to be able to go into Zeus with two materials. 
And then of course, the bread and butter, the extra deck, honestly, to Zeus. Um, I think this is definitely one of the reasons why this deck is actually still playable in the meta. Zeus just makes the deck so much more powerful. And with your BAs, like, it's just so good because you're going to have Dante attached so most of the time. So you're going to get Dante effect as well, basically recur itself and all that stuff. So I definitely think you need two Zeus. I don't think one is enough. Um, going into the links, we got the one access code talker. You know, it didn't come up yesterday, but I know it, it I'm not, uh, I know it has come up before. It's definitely a good card to help you OTK because this deck, even though it's very good and can whiteboard with Zeus, like this deck does actually does not OTK that easily. Um, so yeah, access code is definitely good for that. Then we got the two nightmares, one Phoenix and one, or oh, sorry, one unicorn and one Phoenix. Um, Unicorn is an absolute must. Phoenix, I I was not playing it before. I was actually playing Cerberus um, a few weeks ago. I just put in this Phoenix yesterday, but it came up a good amount of times where I was like, yeah, if I had Phoenix, I could have done more. But so that, that's why I switched out the Cerberus and Phoenix. And actually, it did come up yesterday. So uh, I'm glad I put it back in. Then we got, of course, the one IP. This is part of the combo, ending with IP and Beatrice. So definitely needed good card uh, the one cherubini uh, this is this really helps you with your I guess not necessarily OTK but it just can do a lot of damage if because it helps you go into access code with three um, you know, it can have two or three uh, counters on it so is it 43 or 5300 so it's really good stuff uh, so I definitely think cherubini is needed I know some BA decks don't like using cherubini I personally do. The one gravity controller, of course, if you ever, if you don't draw a way to graph and you draw Seer, you, then you can still end on uh, gravity controller Beatrice uh, with just, yeah, with Seer and, and another BA. So I definitely think it's needed for that situation. And the last but not least, the one Pilgrim. Of course, if, um, I know it doesn't come up very often, but and when it does come up, it's really nice to be able to summon Pilgrim off of Beatrice Effect. So, yeah. So that's it for the extra deck. Now going into the side deck, this is what I was playing yesterday. Uh, I played 3 Droll, mostly for the Drytron matchup, which I never, I never got to play yesterday against. Uh, we got the back row hate, we got 3 Twin Twister, and the 1 Harpy Spell Duster. It did come up yesterday. But I never drew it. Like, I, I put in both rounds, I sided them in. Never drew, not even one. That was tragic. So, unfortunate, but... But I mean, I'm not gonna cut it just because it just sucks that I didn't draw them. Uh, and then we got three Dark Ruler. Dark Ruler, very good card. Um, just I just wanted to have it there for like Window or for... Or like, it, was, it was okay against the Infernoble deck yesterday to negate their whole board. So, yep. And then these are like my going first cards. If I know I'm going first and, and I know the deck has a lot of back row my, that I'm facing, uh, I prefer to have this over Twin Twister because you don't have to discard for this card. And if you're going first and you draw it or you have Trap Trick, then it's live. So, Heavy Storm Duster, Heavy Storm Duster really good. Good more uh, back row destruction. Mm, even like I said, because you don't have to discard, I like that. Um, then we got two anti spell and the one order. Uh, again, I did side these in yesterday, but I never drew them. So it kind of sucks, but what can you do? Um, these are very good, like, these are blowout cards against certain decks. And my deck uses no spell cards um, besides the side deck stuff, but um, yeah, since I have no spell cards in the main. It's perfect for the deck. But yeah, that's it for guys. Um, that's the whole BA deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like I said, I told you guys the little changes I made. And yeah, that's... Even though I didn't play, I didn't do that well yesterday, I'm hoping that with these little changes I made, I'll be able to play again soon and get closer to topping or topping. And that'd be nice if I could do that with this deck. I really want to, I really want to make it happen with this deck, guys. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.
Peace out.